I'm Vicky Spratt, Eyes Housing Correspondent, and today we're in South London to talk about the social housing shortage. My own family once lived in one of the council flats behind me. It was the 1950s and my nan had just given birth to her first child, my uncle. At the time, she and my granddad lived with her parents in an overcrowded house in Croydon, and her dad had just contracted TB. You couldn't have a baby in the same home as someone who had tuberculosis. So when she was in hospital after giving birth, the council came and gave her the keys to a brand new maisonette right here. And that was the first time that she and my granddad had a home of their own. So why am I telling you this story? Today we have a chronic social housing shortage, but it wasn't always like this. During the 20th century, there was a huge social house building drive. That's because the majority of people were living in poor quality, slum-like conditions in privately rented homes. And politicians and social reformers thought that it would be better for the health of the nation if we built social housing and gave people a secure foundation from which to build their lives. By the end of the 1970s, almost a third of the population were living in social housing. And by 1981, 5.5 million homes had been built by or on behalf of local authorities. But then something changed. A policy called Right to Buy was introduced, which facilitated a huge sell-off of social housing. We didn't build enough homes to replace them. And today, there are so few people living in social housing that we are almost back to 1950s levels. Last year, 29,000 social homes were sold off or demolished, but we only built around 7,000 new ones. As a result, in England, there are now 1.4 million fewer people living in social housing than there were in the early 80s. That is why we have a housing crisis and the social housing shortage has pushed millions of people who, like my grandparents, would once have had a council flat into the unstable and insecure private rented sector where they are at the mercy of private landlords. Social housing should be available for people for as long as they need it, but my grandparents didn't stay here forever. They were eventually able to move on and even buy a home of their own, but they credit everything, including that, with the fact that they were given a secure, safe and stable base here from which to build their lives. Today, so few people are living in social housing because we don't have enough of it that we are almost back at 1950s levels. There are over a million people, many of them families with children, languishing on social housing waiting lists, but we simply aren't building enough. 